Hello, Architect Nation, and welcome to today's Architect CEO update. The topic for today is My Firm is Chaos. Today, as I got home from the gym from working out this morning, I saw something absolutely incredible happening in my home. And I'll share in a minute what that thing was. But first, let me tell you about a phone call I had with a firm owner recently telling me that his firm is in chaos. He says that he recently had a meeting with a potential client, actually not a potential client. This is a client that's worked with them in the past and continues to work with their firm. And this, this client uh, approached this architect and said they were having lunch and said, you know, you guys do excellent work. You're, you're, you're great designers, but your service sucks. You are great designers, but your service sucks. And so this was a blow of feedback to this architecture firm owner and he realized that what's causing this service to suck is the fact that there is chaos in the firm. Now, as an architecture firm owner, perhaps you know exactly what I'm talking about when I say chaos in the firm. I worked in the architecture industry full-time for a long time, ran my own firm for a bit, and I know what it's like to have so many things happening at one time. Making sure that you've documented the drawings correctly, making sure that for every building that comes through, you have the right details, you have the right specifications, you have the right notes, you don't have the information more than one place on the drawings. You've coordinated with all the sub consultants, with the structural engineers, the electrical engineers, the plumbing engineers, the, 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 uh, the well, we got there, the mechanical and the electrical, the plumbing and the structural, right? Not to mention if there's any low, low voltage things to coordinate, perhaps a security consultant, right? The list goes on and on, the interior design consultant, I mean, this is absolutely can be a nightmare, a logistical challenge to try to organize this. And at the same time, as an architect, your fees are a lot lower than other professions like attorneys. So for instance, my attorney, who I just met with last week, charges $350 an hour. And granted, his, his profession of law is pretty, pretty plain Jane and pretty vanilla compared to what you're probably doing as an architect in your firm. All he needs to do is understand the code of law. He has a bunch of paralegals to help him out. He might meet with clients every now and then, but he's basically sitting up in front of his computer, typing out memos and sending out letters to sue people, right? <laughs> so this is what he gets paid $350 for. Whereas you as an architect, you're maybe charging 150, 180, $200, $210 an hour if you're lucky. And you're doing twice the, three times the complexity that this attorney's doing. And so what's happening in your firm is because your fees are set at where they are, you're not able to effectively use two things, people and process, to be able to free yourself up and to be able to get rid of the chaos. And so this is the principle we'll be discussing in today's Architect CEO video, is number one, the people, and number two, the process. And I realized that if you're listening to this on the podcast, that obviously it's not a video, but here's what I was talking about earlier. When I came home, from CrossFit, my wife was out because she's doing some errands and there was my daughter. She had just gotten up with her alarm clock and she was making breakfast. So this is about 6.30 in the morning and here she is in the summer. She, no, most kids are probably sleeping in. She is awake at 6.30, she's making waffles. My wife has left for her instructions. Hosanna, my daughter, knows how to make the waffles. She's making the waffles. After the waffles are made, the, the other child who's supposed to set the table knows how to set the table, that gets done. And so literally, I'm in my office, I walk out of my office because I came home from the gym, walked to my office, did a couple things, walked back out, and there the kids are sitting down at the table, food's in front of them, and they have their scriptures open. We read two, two basic books of scripture in the morning, we'll either read out of the Bible or the Book of Mormon, and so the kids are sitting there, they're reading those, and I'm just like in awe. I'm sitting here thinking, this is incredible. And it's not because I'm such a great father because trust me, I yell and I get frustrated and I get angry and I do stupid things all the time. My wife, however, she happens to be a wonderful mother. I'm not gonna talk about the times that she yells, but let's face it, we're not, we're not perfect parents. What's helped us be able to manage a family of six kids and to be able to have this beautiful experience happening when I'm walking out and the kids are sitting there literally reading scriptures to each other without any parent there. And Hosanna, she's only, let's see, what is she? She's, she just turned 13 years old. Right? This is a 13-year-old girl. What allowed this to happen was number one, delegating. Right, So we have a lot of tasks and things that need to happen as a family. The lawn needs to get mowed, the weeds need to get done, the meals need to be made, the house needs to be kept clean. So we delegate these tasks to members of the family. And then we have a specific process that we've trained them on so that the process goes smoothly. Now today it happened that it was smooth. Some days it doesn't go quite as smooth. But here's what I'd have you consider as an architecture firm owner. If you're currently dealing with chaos in your firm, the answer is gonna be 
people and process. What people do you need to delegate to and what process and training do you need to give them so that they can function seamlessly and they can deliver an exceptional experience to you, to themselves, to the other team members, to the clients who you work with and any subconsultants and other stakeholders that you have on your project. If you'd like to find out how to use these two keys, these two principles of number one, people, and number two, this idea of process, then you must go attend the Dream Practice webinar. You can find that at dreampracticewebinar.com. You'll enter in your email address on there, be able to watch that free 60-minute training and be able to kill the chaos in your business. Ultimately, this is one of the goals of the Dream Practice Accelerator program that I run is to help free you up as an architect so that when you walk home or come home from working out of the gym, that your family sitting there very quietly and wonderfully, serenely eating breakfast and doing what they're supposed to do. When you walk into the office after being away, drawings are getting done, questions are being answered, and you're able to focus on your special genius and not just reacting from fire to fire. As always, this is Enoch Sears, and this is the end of today's Architect CEO update, reminding you that if your firm is in chaos, the key likely to fixing this revolves around two things, people and process. As always, carpe diem, seize today.